One of the most fun things about the Fallout games is that they don't tell you everything about the world. They let you discover it as you go. So I get a lot of questions about the nature of vault tech, the people who made the vaults. What is their purpose? What was their goal? Who was behind the scenes? What were they doing? In today's episode, I'm going to take you guys, the vault dwellers and wastelanders out there, on a tour of what we do know about vault tech, all the way from before the war into the things that happen in the games. And in future episodes, we're going to go over all of the different vaults and explore each of those. But for this episode right here, right now, we are exploring vault tech. I hope you guys enjoy the episode. And if this is informative or entertaining at all, I would appreciate a thumbs up, a subscription, and also know that this is part of a larger series that's already out there on the internet in podcast form on iTunes and Spotify and wherever you get your podcasts. So if you want to listen in on the Fallout Lorecast, you can do that in audio form, uh, or you can just hang on and wait till more of these videos get uploaded. So I hope you guys stick around. But for right now, let's go into vault tech Video games are very good at putting us into situations we've never been in before, but sometimes we don't fully experience them. In the beginning of Fallout 4, we have one of those moments where when you first play through the game, it's pretty cool. You go, oh, hey, especially if you played some of the other ones, I am in a part of this universe that happens before the Fallout, before the Grey War. And it's, it's startling, but I think we just, we don't think about it very much. Most of the game happens after that. We don't give it a whole lot of credit. It almost gets mundane, but think about it. If you were in that situation, if you were one of those characters waking up on a Saturday morning, spending time with your family, the news broadcast is on the TV and it's talking about the potential of war and the terrible things that are going on in the international environment. And in Fallout 4, you are a soldier. You are somebody who has seen that conflict firsthand. Just put yourself in that situation. You have a child. You have a spouse. What would you do when the door-to-door salesman comes to your door and says, Good morning, vault calling. I'm here today to tell you that because of your family service to our country, you have been pre-selected for entrance into the local vault. The local vault, an underground bunker where you and your family can go, supposedly to be safe, to avoid the potential of getting blown away by nuclear bombs. The idea that you can save yourself, but at what cost? Think about in today's money, how much would they charge for somebody to go into one of these vaults, for you to have a space for you and your spouse and your child? How much would that cost? I mean, you're going to go somewhere for potentially the rest of your lives, a place where you will have food, a place to live, a community to be involved with, $10,000, $100,000, a million dollars, how much would that cost? And on top of it, there's no guarantee that the vaults would even necessarily be needed. It's not like you or I, the common person waking up in, in your home on Saturday morning, would know for sure that the war was about to occur. How much would it cost? How much would you value that sense of security and a place to go When something like that happens, I'm not sure the numbers, the fallout games don't give us a specific amount of money and how much saving your family would cost in that world. And that's just one way to look at the value of that. But there's another side to this. Whenever you make a financial transaction, especially when it comes to something like the insurance of the safety of you and your family for the future, you also have to take into consideration trust. Do you know who this company is? Are they trustworthy? What do we know about the company? Imagine you're in your living room and the vault tech guy shows up at the door. He's got, he's got a logo that lets you know, Hey, 
I'm the guy from vault Tech. You've seen the ads on television. You've read the newspaper. You know some things about what the United States government is doing in cooperation with my company. You probably have some of that background. Do you trust that? Do you trust it enough to spend that kind of money for the safety of your family moving forward? So let's dig into vault Tech Corporation. Now, who is vault Tech? According to fallout.fandom.com, another wonderful wiki about all of these kinds of topics about Fallout, they describe vault Tech as the vault Tech Corporation, which is the official name. They were a company contracted by the United States government before the Great War to design and produce the vault system, a vast network of complex bomb and research shelters. Now, The next section in the wiki has a warning. It says, the following is based on Fallout Brotherhood of Steel and has not been confirmed by canon sources. Fallout Brotherhood of Steel is not considered one of the canon sources, but it is a source. So it's worth considering what what is said there. So it goes on to say, Vault Tech designed and constructed advanced technologies. It was a major military contractor before the Great War, and as such developed highly experimental advanced and secret technologies. In time, Vault Tech became so thoroughly integrated with top secret military research done by the Pentagon that it had practically become a department of the U.S. government. The company still remained in private hands. But because of its strong connection to the American government, the principal personnel of vault Tech, its executives, top scientists, engineers, and so on, had to be aware of the true purpose of the vault and Project Safehouse. They were tied together. vault Tech and the government, there are connections. There may be individuals who who are part of both organizations, but yet there was still a separation. And it goes on, regardless of the American government's directives, vault Tech's high-ranking personnel had no intention of submitting to a lottery and living underground with a bunch of human cattle in the intentionally defective vault facilities they had constructed. They had come up with a plan for their own people. vault Tech instead created their own private emergency shelter facility for the top employees and their families, removed from the larger vault network and kept secret from the US government. This facility is known as the secret vault, but uh, the wiki goes on and explains, vault Tech did not stop there. This private secret installation was used to research new, more advanced technologies that would benefit mankind in the midst of post-nuclear environment. The initiative included some extensive research with the forced evolutionary virus, the FEV, which we've discussed before, the results of which, unlike the government-controlled research on the virus's uses at Vault 87, was also kept secret from the government. It is known that the FEV stored in the secret vault was highly modified in an attempt to achieve its original goals and also avoid sterility among those subjects infected and mutated by it. That's another point. We haven't really discussed the super mutants, but super mutants are sterile. They cannot reproduce uh, in normal means. However, this modification proved unsuccessful. Other vault Tech projects that were intended for the corporation's own use included the development of their own robotic systems, a special biological weapons program, the results of which were probably the creation of a unique race of rad roaches and a variation of the death claw. I believe this is the furry death claw. Advanced biomedical research on the effects of rapid cell regeneration and even an attempt to create a model of power armor to be used by vault Tech personnel. So none of this is canon. This stuff is speculative based on a game that is not considered canon. But like we've discussed with like the film treatment mentioned in one of the previous episodes, this might be a hint at what the writers are actually intending is is really going on behind the scenes. Now, what do we know for sure? What do we know that is canon? Well, let's talk about Project Safe House and the Societal Preservation Program. According to the wiki, officially the vaults were part of Project Safe House, designed to protect the American population from nuclear holocaust. In actuality, they had a more sinister purpose a project known as the Societal Preservation Program. So it's like a project inside of a project, a secret project. 
the vaults could not possibly have saved the civilians of the United States from the ravages of a nuclear war or a viral pandemic with a population of almost 400 million by 2077, the U S would have needed over 400,000 vaults to protect every man, woman, and child. Vault tech was commissioned by the American government to build only 122 such vaults. Now I'm not sure exactly where that number comes from. I haven't been able to find that yet. If you happen to know where the definitive number of 122 comes from, I'm all ears. Um, th- I, there is speculation that that comes from a specific source and, uh, I need to do a little bit more re- research to find that source exactly. But there's also some speculation that the number goes beyond that. That just happens to be the highest number we might be aware of. So we'll see. Let, let me know if you know anything more about 122 volts. So it goes on. The true reason for the construction of the vaults was to allow the government to secretly study pre-selected segments of the American population, observe how they would react to the stresses of isolation and how successfully they would recolonize the devastated earth and stars after the vault opened. It goes on. Only a few pre-selected vaults would be used for colonizing the surface. They were known as control vaults. These include Vault 8 and Vault 76, which we're all familiar with because the game just released a few months back. In addition, most vaults were designed to conduct often immoral experiments on live human test subjects. This project was the work of the Enclave. We've talked about the Enclave before, and according to this article, they were specifically involved with the testing projects. So again, a connection is the connection that they hired vault tech to do this? Did they have a man on the inside? Was it a government operative who was part of the enclave and also part of vault tech or was it coordination between different people? We don't really know, but we do know that they were connected. It goes on to say the enclave is a secret shadow organization of the federal officials and corporate executives that use the vault tech company to set up this sinister experiment. The Enclave consider themselves prime candidates for colonizing the world or recolonizing the world after a nuclear holocaust, and to this end, commission the construction of their own shelters isolated from the vault network. Now, if you played enough Fallout 76, that might sound familiar. The results of the vault experiments were intended to help prepare the Enclave for their recolonizing of Earth or colonizing another planet if Earth turned out to be uninhabitable. Right there. The go to the stars. The experiments were monitored by vault tech researchers in separate facilities. Sometimes select vault inhabitants, frequently the overseer, were aware of the nature of the experiment and also gathered data. The experiment may be considered a success in terms of the data collected, data that was much more important to the vault tech and Enclave scientists than a few hundred thousand lives. Perhaps they felt that the trade-off was mutual, as most of the vault dwellers would have died anyway, if not for the vaults. Although the vaults were supposedly designed with longevity in mind, many vaults had insufficient resources and are in dire need of repair. It is uncertain whether or not the vault tech vaults were actually supposed to malfunction as many did, or whether they were deliberately ill-constructed. Think back to Fallout 1. You in Fallout 1, the main character, are sent from the vault to find a way to fix the water chip. Did the water chip, was it, was it planned to fall apart and create a situation where the people in the vault would need to rise to the occasion to solve the situation? Or was it just faulty technology? We don't really know. The article wraps up by noting that the only known vaults to continuously function successfully that we're aware of are Vault 101, Vault 112, and Vault 81. Some of those might sound familiar. Their vault experiments were intended to continue indefinitely. In the year 2077, Vault Tech opened up an exhibit in Nuka World. If you play the Nuka World expansion of Fallout 4, then you may have visited this place. It's pretty cool. One of the purposes of the attraction was to draw in more Vault customers. But visitors and staff were subjected to radiation, subliminal messages, toxins, and brainwave disruption as part of Vault Tech's grand scheme. Even in the exhibit at Nuka World, they were doing experiments on people visiting. 
How morally bankrupt do you have to be to do that? Think about it. Families, children, think about it. Now, there are more details about vault that we can go into that we will most definitely hit upon as we talk about individual vaults and the experiments going on at those vaults. Uh, but it's just some fun, notable stuff that's worth worth noting here. Uh, on the same wiki, they have a list of known products. Uh, some of the products include things like, um, you know, general stuff like the vaults themselves, equipment and supplies at the vaults, uh, nutritional alternate paste program, food paste developed by Vault Tech in conjunction with the federal government. Uh, things that may be familiar include the Garden of Eden creation kit, kit or the GEC. Some of you guys might know what that is. We can discuss that a little bit more in the future. Vault Tech vending machines, Vault Tech assisted targeting system. This should be familiar. VATS, assisted targeting system. Uh, the Vault Tech promotional lunchbox. If you remember the lunchboxes from Fallout 4, Vault Tech t shirts, golf tees, promotional Vault Boy bobbleheads. Those were created by Vault Tech as part of their uh, marketing plan. Bobblehead collector stands, Vault Tech limited edition snow globes. Do you remember the snow globes from Fallout New Vegas? Uh, Zach's AI units, survival handbooks, including the Vault Dweller survival guide, Vault Tech employee handbooks, uh, Vault Boy's big book of laugh for kids, Tranquility Lane Simulation. That's a really good one. I hope you've played through that in Fallout 3. There's a few others if you want to drop into the wiki and check that out. Now, there are only a few known locations of Vault Tech uh, other than the vaults themselves for Vault Tech as a company. These include some of the headquarters, which show up in some of the cities throughout the games. Uh, cities like Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Boston. Also, as mentioned before, the Among the Stars exhibit at Nuka, Nuka World and Vault Tech University, which plays a key role in Fallout 76. So the question I leave you with is, on that Saturday morning, when the Vault Tech rep knocks on your door, what do you do? How much money is too much? Do you trust him? <laughs>